So I think that moment came very quickly for Penny where she inherited and she passed it along very quickly. There was no time to wait. She couldn't say, oh, later when it's more convenient, when the children are older, um, when my husband uh, won't be uh, disconcerted. You, you, sometimes you have to go against other people's comfort and n make the unpopular decision to vote for yourself. And she had the willpower to, to do that. And I, I admire her tremendously. I mean, she was a role model for a lot of women in her success with that. With that. I mean, she, <clears throat> I, I read the screen, she, read a lot of, she broke a lot of conventions and walking into a men's, men's only club. <laughs> well, she didn't have a choice but to break convention just by the sheer fact of her gender. I mean, yes, she didn't wait to be invited. <laughs> so, so this woman basically knew how to get things done, is that what you say? I would say so. I would say so. She had a, a, a good business acumen. She had the confidence uh, in, in recognizing the wisdom that her father had used, for example, in, in going with the horse breeding to, to be in the business of the mare, the brood mare versus the sires. Yes, the sires are a lot more glamorous and a lot more expensive. And it's like the Bible, you know, the who begats. The, the sires get all this attention, but really they get, you get just as much out of the bloodline from the, from the females. In fact, it's secretariats, granddaughters now, and great granddaughters, I think, that are showing up and uh, performing well at the racetrack. So. Yeah. Going through the female gene, yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's being handed down from the female. You're saying. <laughs> Evidently, I wouldn't. You know, yeah. Don't don't look a gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> We're full of those on this show. Oh boy, every day we have to have at least one or two. <laughs> and now, can we talk about the relationship that Penny had with the, the secretary? That was a pretty special thing, wasn't it? Well, you know, honestly, truth be told. This horse was so special in more ways than just the athlete aspect of him. He had a self-possession that very few four-legged creatures have. He really did like to go onto the racetrack and survey the territory, the territory. And he really did know and have a sense <clears throat> not just of competition, which is fascinating to watch racehorses have this. They have it in their blood. I mean, it's been bred into them, that sense of competition, that sense of wanting to prove themselves. And they know when a horse is in front of them, their objective is to be the one in front of their, that's just in them. But he had a sense of awareness that is I've been around a lot of horses especially on this show but um, and I've seen how their personalities are really something I mean you have to take the time cowboys used to take the time to get to know their animal uh, these days if you ride a horse you pay fifteen dollars and you're on the horse for 15 minutes or whatever and you have your little pony ride that's not getting to know an animal um, so you spend some time with the animal and you really get to see how much personality is what you're dealing with. Um, and, and, and Secretariat had an inordinate amount of personality. Did they, did they see themselves as sort of a spiritual bond? I, mean, did they, I think they sort of understood each other, didn't they? Um, she had a sense Penny did, of the horse's confidence in himself. And that's a very infectious aspect that you want to nurture. She's a mother, don't forget. So this was like her baby, and this was a gift that came through her father with uh, the lineage of, of, of their business, in, in, in the horse breeding business. So there is a family aspect to their relationship that's real. And the feeling responsible and feeling maternal and wanting the best for your son, as it were, 
and wanting that opportunity to, wanting him to have his opportunities, uh, it emboldens you more than if you were a mercenary. You know, she wasn't in this in a mercenary capacity. It was profound for her. You know, the 70s are almost a period now. <laughs> almost? I hate to break it to you. Yes, I know. I know. What, what is it like to be a, to be a, 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 to play a woman in, in, in the 70s? I mean, obviously part of it is the costumes. Yeah, it's really fun. The hair is to die for. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, Penny is a creature of the 50s. And like a lot of women, something works for you. You don't want to change it, even though fashions may come and go. But if you like yourself looking a certain way, then you keep that. And that was very much Penny. I mean, you could see her from across the, the racetrack. <laughs> this hair is tame compared to her real hair. I mean, the woman, I asked her, I said, what was your hairspray? What, did you sleep in? You know, she said, no, I was gifted with hair. I don't know if she was telling me the truth, but I, I don't doubt her. But you know, she did have fa fabulous hair. So that was something to live up to that uh, required professional health. But the, yeah, the, the 50s for Penny at this age in her life, that was her, her youth was in the 50s. And now she's in midlife and now her kids are getting just a little older, savvy. They're having boyfriends, her daughters are having boyfriends and looking to college years and I don't know. I, there's something timeless about that as a, as a woman, but being in the 70s, it was different because there had, so much change had come through the 60s. We, I don't know what else to compare it to. I guess in our lifetime, it's the technological age. It's the computers. It's these little devices that our children are, they go right out of the womb and into the conveyor belt of this mechanism. It's so infuriating for me, but this is their, their generation, and I'm grateful that I'm not weaned on that. I'm glad it came along later in my life so that my brain isn't trained by these devices. So, but every generation is like this, you see. So for, for Penny, you know, in the 70s, uh, these kids today, I don't know what they would be saying. I... You know, <clears throat> at that time, here's a, here's a woman who is, who, who, this is the 70s, and these guys here in the South, all horse people, mm -hmm. uh, men were what, either dismissive or, 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 they, or they were very... Uh, condescending. Condescending. So how did she get around that? How did she work that? Um... You know, I think a, a lady is as a lady does, and she conducted herself like a business person, um, not, not bound by her gender. So, and she had the permission slip in her mind of conducting her father's business. So th that is a larger priority than oh, I'm my father's son, or oh, I'm my father's daughter. No, I'm here on business. <laughs> it's not personal, you know. And what told, did it take a toll on the relationship with, with, with the husband? Absolutely. I mean, in truth, more than we deal with in our, in our film, because, you know, how much can you tell in, in two hours, or however long a movie's allowed to be these days. But, yeah, there was a, there was a lot more to it than, uh, than we could get into. The, their, their, their marriage couldn't withstand this. And I don't think it was the reason, but I think it was the catalyst of their demise. And we do deal with it in the film, just not to distraction, because, I don't know, too much, too much information.